Hi, I'm Rowan. Welcome to my new YouTube channel. Um, this is hopefully going to be the first video of many and I'm new to this so please excuse any awkwardness. Um, I'll get into the swing of it and I'll learn how to start these videos off in a normal non-cringy way eventually. <laughs> So to kickstart this channel, I thought I'd start with making a knit jumper. Don't judge me, but I've been slightly obsessed with the Kardashians at the moment and completely binged the series. Um, and I've got into this habit of taking a photo and screenshotting every knit that Kendall wears that I think is cute that I want to make for myself. So I thought I'd kickstart with this jumper yeah I thought that this would be like a cute one to kind of start and something kind of fun my wardrobe is definitely very grey beige lacking in colour so I thought I would make something fun a bit more colour and that I definitely wear coming into the winter months so this cardigan is by RTA and it's called the Esme Sweater. Um, I think it's retailing for around £300, around that mark. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will link it in the description box below if you like the jumper and yeah. So before I get into all my yarns and stuff, the fun part, I thought I'd show you kind of how I've done the pattern and it is not professional at all. It's a, a draft and a bit of a mess and probably won't make sense but it makes sense to me so that's all that matters I guess but basically I printed off two photos of the jumper uh, one in colour so I should keep track of the colours <laughs> and one in black and white that I've kind of doodled on so as I've kind of made my pattern I've put on here the number of rows and how many stitches each of the colours is going to be. So for instance, the ribbing, I wanted it to be six centimetres high. So it says 11, but I actually did 12. I have started this already. Um, so I did 12 rows and then 88 stitches. So everything up until we get to the neckline is going to be 88 stitches. Um, and each one of these sections is going to be around eight rows until we get to the chunky ones, which um I've said 11 rows and 15 rows but I might tweak those as we get on and I see how big it's looking um we'll kind of tweak it as we go along and I'll update you on what the pattern actually is um yeah <laughs> and how I got to that point <laughs> I don't really know how I really got to the point but I did this very drafty oh kind of pattern and I based this off a jumper that I already own that I like the fit of so I kind of measured that out of the kind of lengths and measurements that I wanted it to be um and then used my cardigan that I made because I'm going to use the same same yarn same size needles um and same kind of stitch um to do this so I used that as kind of a swatch so I kind of made a note of like every 10 centimeters is 20 rows or every 10 centimeters is 16 stitches um <clears throat> so yeah from this I worked out this and how many rows and stuff that I'll need so I don't think this is going to be overly helpful for you if you're going to make it yourself <laughs> I don't know, maybe it is, I don't know, um, but during the process I'll share what I'm actually doing and any tweaks and then the final project, the measurements, how many rows, how many stitches I did. Um, yeah, and then hopefully that'll be more helpful come the end because I'm sure things will change and it'll get tweaked. Now into the fun part, I can show you my yarns. I honestly enjoy buying yarn so much. I think I enjoy the process of buying and receiving yarn more than I enjoy the actual making of the things. Bear with. It's a big bag of yarn. 
Um, so it's not all from Wool and the Gang. A lot of it's from Wool and the Gang, but I did go to some other brands just because they didn't have the colors that I needed. So this was one of the brands that I went to, Diablo. We got this cute pink color from Wool and the Gang. I love this color so much. And then I went to Hobby and got this other mohair. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I'm using mohair to make this. More wool and gang. Oh, I love this colour. I just think it's really cute. I just, I really like it. Um, I think I might have gone overboard with the wool and got too much, but I'm kind of fine with that. I think obviously having too much than too little, but I really like the colours. So I feel like if I've got some left over, I could make something else that's really cute as well. So much wool. I love it. it makes me so happy. So let's get into the project. So I did already start, obviously, um, but this is going to be the back piece. So I finished doing the ribbing in black. It's really hard to see um, on the camera, but I did one by one rib and it measures a total of 55 centimeters, um, which is 88 rows and 12. 80, yeah, no, 88 stitches of 12 rows. Um, yeah, and then I've introduced this kind of like, I don't know why I'm saying kind of, it's white. <laughs> it was meant to be more of a yellowy white and it kind of looked more yellowy white online, but it's come out just white basically. So I don't know if you can see in the diagram, it's kind of meant to be this kind of like, shelly yellowy kind of off-white color um and it doesn't look like that um but it is what it is it's just gonna be more white in it now so the first seven color sections are going to be the same size so we're doing a total of eight rows and we're using the stocking stitch for this whole um project so yeah, we're just gonna keep on knitting for a, a very long time. So I feel like I'm actually the world's slowest knitter ever. I've watched people knit and I don't understand how they're so quick. Like I am way quicker at crochet and therefore I enjoy crochet more because I'm just faster make better and I know it'll come with time but I just I don't get like with the whole technique of knitting how you can be so quick maybe one day I'll get down I definitely needed a change in scenery just to get cozy and watch some tv while I knitted all day and of course easy access to snacks but this was pretty much me all day hi it's day two and we got this much done of the back panel the jumper yesterday I'm pretty impressed to be fair. I did like a solid maybe like six hours in total undisturbed knitting. And I think that's pretty good. So we the aim of today, this evening, because I've just got back from work and it is half past five, is to finish the back piece. That's my aim for this evening. 
So looking at the pattern, if I'm being completely honest with myself, I don't know if I'll finish the back piece today. Just because we're like halfway through and that took me like six hours yesterday to just do half of the back panel. And we've got another half to do. So, yeah, I don't have six hours this evening. Mm, I technically do, but it'd just be like non stop knitting. So, I think we're just going to just as much of the back panel as possible. I want to finish it, but it's probably unlikely to be finished today. So, I'm currently halfway through this white row. Good morning. I totally forgot to film that I finished the back piece and started on the front. Um, it's all pretty much the same anyway, but we're working on the front piece now. So it's been a few days since the last clip. I have been relatively busy, but I've managed to get a few hours here and there um, on the jumper and I have a day off today. So I thought I'd start early and have pretty much a whole day of trying to do as much of this as possible. However, I have made a massive boo-boo on this and I am infuriated with myself. Basically, I cast off the neckline way sooner than I needed to do because for some reason, I was in a rush slash excited to finish the front panel and decided not to use my brain, not to check, not to double check this. Just, just went with it. And I don't know why I did it. And I'm livid with myself. Let me show you. So I basically cast it off. But <laughs> huge. It's so big. Like, it's huge. And basically where I went wrong is in my diagram, I printed these off basically for colour reference. So if I didn't have my phone or I didn't have anything, I could just look at the colours and be like, okay, that's nice too, you know? And to doodle on, to put my stitch counts on and stuff. But I forgot that this actually isn't the same as the one Kendall Jenner was wearing. This one, I think, is a much more snug fit, just a different one. It's just the same kind of colours and the same patterns, but it's a different jumper. The one Kendall Jenner was wearing, when I checked, the neckline finishes like here. So it's much more like higher, like, like this, instead of here, <laughs> which I've done, which... I feel like it's gonna, it probably will look okay, but it's not gonna make me wanna wear it. So, we are gonna have to undo everything up until this black bit. And I'm just not looking forward to it at all. Like in crochet, when you do something wrong and you just, whoosh, it's way easier, I feel to correct work, whereas this knitting, I think it's harder. And I've picked the worst colour to go wrong on because the black, you can't see, you can't see the stitches as easy. So yeah, that's the aim of today, to undo up until here and then redo it. Oh, funny babes. Let's go. Okay, I've got past the casting off bit, so I'm hoping this is a bit easier now. Bam! That was smooth. Oh, yes. Okay. Feels slightly better about it now. Okay, 
so that took me like actually no time at all which is I've just realised I've done it wrong again. It's the wrong colour. This should be orange. I thought I was at this black bit. I'm gonna cry. This is what I pay attention. But anyway, so now I'm gonna just have to undo this. And then we're back to the black again. Okay, so I'm just going to crack on and finish this front panel. And I will see you guys when I get over to the neck. And we'll attach these bad boys together and do some ribbing. It's been some days since I spoke to you last, but the good news is that I did finish that front panel that day uh, with the decreases for the neckline. Um, I've just popped some stitch markers in to kind of like hold that together. And I finished the sleeves as well. So today's going to be a sewing everything together and doing the neckline ribbing as well. Basically we're going to finish this sweater today. <laughs> so once I got to the point that I wanted to decrease, um, I normally knitted 27 stitches, then casted off 34 and then that left me with 27 stitches on the other side as well as we had a total of 88 stitches altogether. Um, and then I literally just built up each side normally um yeah until i finished at the same point as the back bit um so yeah that was pretty straightforward i kind of just i did slightly wing how many stitches i would cast off but i think the general rule is like 40 percent of the stitches you cast off so that was the rule that i followed so i'll quickly run through with you what i did with the sleeves as well um i obviously did them in one big piece. I wanted the sleeves to be quite big, like quite baggy. Um, I do have a slight concern that I didn't, I didn't do the ribbing around the cuffs any smaller because I did want them to be bigger. I didn't want them to be super tight and then like balloon. Um, I know there is an in between, but I just did them baggy because frankly, I was being a bit lazy and didn't want to do any, um, increases <laughs> so I just did it like all one length which might be potentially a mistake um if they are too big or too baggy I, I like a baggy sleeve so I have I have faith in myself um but yeah it could potentially be slightly on the baggier side which is fine it's fine it'll work out it'll work out okay <laughs> um but basically I matched um the body, the colour panels that are on the body. Apart from, I did the same amount of ribbing stitches as on the body piece, which was 12 rows. And then I added a further two just normal, normal rows on top of that. And then instead of going in with the slightly off-white um, yarn, I went in with the white and then the yeah, off-white. So I added an extra, um, like extra section of eight rows in the white, plus then the two extra in the back, just to add that little bit of extra, which I think works out 
okay the sleeves and in the pictures of the swear as well that's what they've done they've added their black looks slightly larger and they've added this white section before the off-white um i hope you can see the color difference so i did stop at the sleeves at the big chunk of pink and then just did three rows of black which i will join up at the top now we're just sewing together the front and back panel starting at the shoulders just so we can get that ribbing in first before sewing in the sleeves and the rest of the panels. is ready he is the neediest little doggo in the world he's definitely a lap dog and struggles sleeping alone i'm not complaining <laughs> every time i try and film he's just like wants to be the center of attention um anyway so i've managed to say manage I've sewn together the two joins at the shoulder, um, so they're all attached now, and we're just going to work on the ribbing next. So I'm going to work around the neckline and I'm going to pick up a stitch um, in every stitch <laughs> around the neckline, and we're going to do it in black the same as the ribbing at the bottom to kind of like tie that all in together. I'm not entirely sure how many rows I'm going to do yet but um, I'm thinking maybe like eight maybe. So I've finished adding those stitches into the neckline. Um, I just followed the natural stitches that I already had. There was no increases or decreases. And now we're just going to work in the round um, with knit one, purl one to create the same ribbing effect as we have on the bottom here. So I've just popped it on just to check the thickness and I've done a total of four rows already and to be honest I think this is actually perfect I think this works I think if I did any more it could look a bit chunky and I like how it sits where it does I don't want it too high so I'm gonna leave it here and cast off and then we can just sew the rest of it together So I've just finished sewing on the sleeves to the main body down here and now we're going to work on sewing the rest of it together. We're going to start from the ribbing down here and sew up here then along and we're going to use some of these ends to sew it together and match the colours up. This really is the most tedious and least enjoyable part for me. If I could hire someone to do this for me, I would because it made me want to lose my mind and I needed about 10 breaks. So this is the finished product. I am over the moon with it. I love it so much. I love the colours and the bagginess of it. It's just super cosy. This is what the sweater looks like tucked out of the pants. I think I prefer it tucked in, but it's still super cute. I did end up actually following the pattern that I made pretty much to a T. Let me know what you think and if you love it as much as I do and if you're going to try this one. You 